the state of Georgia, has used capital punishment for nearly 300 years. The death penalty was used in the state as early as 1735 for crimes ranging from murder to aiding a runaway slave. The first person believed legally executed in Georgia was Alice Riley, a white woman who was hung for the murder of her master. The last execution by hanging took place in Augusta in 1931. Georgia's General Assembly passed a law in 1924 that abolished hanging and introduced electrocution, to be carried out at the state penitentiary. The U.S. Supreme Court suspended all executions in the United States in 1964 and, in 1972, it struck down all laws that allowed persons convicted, of certain crimes to be executed. Georgia passed a new death penalty law in 1973, and the Supreme Court upheld Georgia's death penalty as constitutional in 1976. In 2000, lethal injection was signed into law as the new legal method of execution in Georgia. The first execution by lethal injection was carried out in 2001 and a total of 30 executions by that method have been carried out. Two women have been executed in Georgia so far and one currently sits on death row. Lena Baker was sentenced to die in the electric chair in 1944 following a one-day trial before an all-white, all-male jury in Randolph County. During her trial, Baker testified that E.B. Knight a man she had been hired to care for, held her against her will in a Cuthbert grist mill and threatened to shoot her if she tried to leave. She said she grabbed Knight's gun and shot him when he raised a metal bar to strike her. Baker was executed at the Georgia State Prison in Reedsville on March 15, 1945. In 2005, she received a posthumous pardon from the state. The last woman executed in Georgia was Kelly Gissendanner. Gissendanner was sentenced to die by lethal injection for her role in her husband's 1997 murder. She was executed on September 30, 2015, at the Georgia Diagnostic and Classification Prison in Jackson. Tiffany Nicole Moss Born July 20, 1983 is the only woman currently on George's death row. Emma Giovanni Moss and Tiffany married in July 2009 and had two children, a son and a daughter. Though there are no records indicating that Tiffany abused her biological children, she did abuse some money. Emma Giovanni Moss, the biological father of the money Gabriel Moss, who was born on April 23, 2003. Emin Moss, largely raised Imani and often took her to the Freedom Christian Church. There, he met Tiffany Moss, a preschool teacher. In 2013, Tiffany Moss began starving Imani. Imani's father, Emin Giovanni Moss, who was rarely home, failed to stop the abuse. Shortly after Imani's birth, her mother, addicted to drugs, surrendered her parental rights, and Imani's father, Emin Giovanni Moss gained sole custody of her. Imani was one of five children born to her mother. Her mother surrendered parental rights to all of her children. Emma Giovanni Moss was charged with and convicted of battery and second-degree child cruelty in 2004 after beating Imani's biological mother in front of her. The abuse increased in March 2010 after a beating of Imani caused Moss to lose her job. Imani, then age six, told a school nurse that she feared going home with a bad report card because she worried her parents would hurt her. She also told the nurse that her stepmother had spanked her with a curtain rod. The nurse then found multiple scabs, bruises, and welts on Imani's arms, back, chest, legs, and shoulders, and Imani was taken to the police headquarters. 
Tiffany was arrested and charged with first-degree child cruelty. Tiffany admitted to hitting Imani three times after she failed to do her homework. After the March 2010 beating, Imani was taken from her father and stepmother's home and placed with her grandmother Robin, staying with her for about six months. During this time, Imani's school performance improved. Emin fought for custody of Imani, and in the fall of 2010, the GDFCS returned her to him. Robin fought to retain custody of her granddaughter. Though she suspected Imani was being abused, she could not persuade authorities to give her custody. Moss continued to abuse Imani for the next several years. In July 2012, Imani twice tried to run away from home. In one case, she went to the apartment office and told them she wanted to run away because Moss had tied her up with a belt and placed her in a cold shower. The police responded and were told by Moss that Imani was not telling the truth. Because there was not enough evidence to charge anyone, Imani was returned to Emin and Moss. In another July 2012 incident, Imani ran away and was found sleeping in the bushes of a nearby apartment complex by a police officer. Imani told the officer that she had run away because her stepmother was mean to her. The officer reported the event to the GDFCS and filed runaway and curfew violation charges against Imani to ensure she would see a juvenile court judge. From 2011 to the summer of 2013, the Moss family moved around, sometimes living with family. Emma Giovanni Moss, who worked long hours, did not see his daughter often. He later reported at trial that she would eat a lot when he saw her on the weekends when he was in charge of the children. When the Mosses lived on their own, Imani rarely saw extended family. In May 2013, the Mosses visited Emin's sister Sharonis's house for Mother's Day. Sharonis and Robin noticed that Imani's hair had been cut. When Robin confronted Tiffany Moss about it, Tiffany Moss reportedly said, If you act ugly, you should look ugly. Sharon has also noticed that Imani acted more timidly. After the 2012 to 2013 school year ended, Emma Giovanni Moss and Moss announced that they would pull Imani from public school and homeschool her. Sharon is the sister of Emma Giovanni Moss objected to the idea and called the GDFCS, asking them to intervene. Still, they declined. Mother's Day the 12th of May, 2013 was the last time any members of Imani's family, besides her father, stepmother, and siblings, saw her alive. At some point, Moss began to starve Imani. The starvation likely lasted several weeks. During this time, Imani was confined to her bedroom. Neighbors only saw Tiffany Moss's biological children and did not know they had an older sister. Imani eventually became too weak to move and could not leave her bed, urinate or defecate. Though Tiffany Moss denied food to Imani, she did take care of and feed her two biological children. In the early evening of October 24, Imani suffered what Emin believed was a seizure. Emin testified that when he came home, Moss told him something was wrong with Imani. He then went into the bathroom and found his daughter in the bathtub shaking. Imani was unresponsive, and her eyes were rolling back and forth. Emin moved Imani to her bed, where she stayed for the next couple of days. Emin visited her during this time and tried to feed her but was unsuccessful. Imani died on October 28, 2013. By the time Imani died, she was severely underweight. Imani was more or less skin and bones. 
She weighed 32 pounds, the weight of the average three-year-old. Additionally, her organs were found at autopsy to be very small. On October 28th, Tiffany Moss called Emin at work to tell him that Imani was dead. Emin Moss, the father of Imani, said that when he came home from work, the family seemed normal, with the children playing and Moss watching TV. He found his daughter lying on a blanket on her bedroom floor. He told his wife they should call the police, though she insisted they couldn't because she would lose her children. Tiffany Moss told Emin they needed to hide Imani's body and be on our criminal mind. Emin wrapped Imani's body with blankets and moved her to the computer room. The couple kept Imani's body in their apartment for several days, and their lives largely went back to normal. Emin Giovanni Moss said that he would go to work and spend time at home with Imani's body grieving. The Moss couple agreed to cover up Imani's death. The day after Imani's death, Moss went to Anna's linens and bought new sheets and a new coverall, as the ones Imani had used were covered with excrement and urine. Moss suggested burying Imani and reporting her as a runaway. Emma Giovanni Moss went to Walmart and bought a galvanized trash can, trash bags, charcoal, and lighter fluid. On Halloween, Tiffany Moss and Emin decided to put Imani's body in the trash can and burn it. When they tried to place her in the trash can, they found that she was stiff with rigor mortis and used duct tape to compress her body. Emin covered her with a comforter. The Mosses then stuffed Imani's body in the trash bag. In the early morning of November 1st, the Moss couple put the trash can containing Imani's body in the back of their car and took their children to find a place to burn it. They found a secluded location to commit the arson and removed the trash can from the vehicle. They added charcoal briquettes to the bottom of the can, doused Imani's body with lighter fluid, and set it on fire. As the couple watched the body burn, they found it would not burn to ash. After about five minutes, they extinguished the fire and took the trash can and Imani's body back to the apartment. The Moss's trial began on April 15, 2019, and was presided over by Judge George Hutchinson. The jury consisted of six men and six women. Tiffany Moss who was appointed lawyers through the State Office of the Capitol Defender, decided to represent herself, despite Judge Hutchinson's efforts to persuade her otherwise. Instead of representing her, her defense attorneys served as standby attorneys to answer any legal questions. Tiffany Moss did not give an opening statement, nor did she cross-examine any witnesses or give a closing argument. On April 29, Tiffany Moss was convicted on all six counts, including one count of malice murder, two counts of felony murder, two counts of cruelty to children, and one count of concealing a death. The jury deliberated for less than three hours. And her husband Amon Giovanni Moss, the father of the victim was sentenced to life in prison. During the sentencing phase, Tiffany Moss declined to address the jury, present mitigating evidence, or have her relatives who had attended the trial testify on her behalf. She also refused to make a closing statement. As of March 2023, Tiffany Nicole Moss has spent more than three years on George's death row. Thank you for watching Death Row.